to call the city council meeting of October 7th, 2021 to order. Roll call, please. Alderman Hertz. Here. Alderman Sosnarski. Here. Alderman Sorrentino. Here. Alderman Messina. Here. Alderman Jacob. Here. Alderman Curielli. Here. Alderman Catalano. Here. Alderman Ames. Here. And Mayor Police. Here, I declare a quorum present. Please stand and join the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. No problem, Biden. You eat all the part. All right, first off, I need a motion to approve the minutes of September 16, 2021. So moved. Second. Okay, a motion and a second. Questions, comments, corrections? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That passes. Okay, any citizens wish to be heard this evening on matters not listed on the agenda? I have no written communique this evening under mayor's report. I will just turn over to Chief Vesta. Thanks, Mayor. Uh, members of City Council, um, we're here for the 2021 Emmy Awards or something, I think. So, um, <laughs> no, no political speeches tonight. Um, as you know, I'm, I'm so proud of the work that our sworn and our non-sworn members of the department do. And uh, we, we come up here once in a while to share some of those accomplishments. Uh, tonight, we've got several of those. Um, so <laughs> thanks for giving us some of your time to share some of that with, with you and, and the citizens out there. Um, you know, we, we had our department meeting yesterday where we reaffirmed our oath of honor. And we also talked about our purpose in Wooddale and policing and, you know, and why we do what we do and, and what the citizens of Wooddale have come to expect from us on a daily basis and the level of service we provide to them. Um, there's nothing more poignant or making us remember more of what, what we do is, is when we come up here every year and we talk about our DUI enforcement awards. So um, with, with that, I'd like to invite Charlie Woolley up from the Alliance Against Intoxicated Motorists and a dear friend of ours and uh, someone that we came to know many years ago under unfortunate circumstances, but I can't say enough for her to be here and just remind us of why we do what we do. So, Charlie, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you. Thanks. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for inviting me again. I think this is like the 20th year. Um, Eric was killed in the city of Wooddale on June 16th, 2000, right at Wooddale and Thorndale. Uh, it's changed a lot since then, obviously. Um, but it was early in the morning on a Friday morning. Um, he was heading back from swim practice going to work to his dad's office, which is on Tani. His dad was coming up Tani and saw him making the left-hand turn and thought, well, I'll wave at him and honk when I go by. Fortunately, my husband looked away for a split second and the next thing he heard was the crash of a semi driving into the side of Eric's IROC Z. That day, both boys were supposed to be in the car. The youngest boy decided to be lazy and stay home. He would have been killed instantly because it hit his side. At that time, Chief Benowitz was here, and they called him the task force. This was a repeat offender, many times over, using his brother's um, ID. He's gotten off of uh, going the wrong way on an uh, entrance ramp and an exit ramp. Um, he's always fought it. This time he wasn't so lucky because they had a task force that they got from the area and they dotted all their I's and they crossed all their T's. And I say this, and people think I'm strange for saying this, but we are fortunate that it happened in DuPage County and not in Cook County. Because Cook County is not as strict and as forthcoming on DUIs and deaths as DuPage was. At the time, Joe Burkett was the state's attorney and he made sure that this got taken care of. It was a very high profile case. Um, he was sent to prison for 14 years. He served 85%. He couldn't get off for good behavior. Um, 
He went back to jail again just shortly after he got out. He was caught driving on uh, no license and they sent him back. They went for the maximum and he got three years. He just recently got out. But the feeling I have for Wooddale, even though such a tragic thing happened here, is that the people always stood behind us and the police department stood behind us and your city council has been there for us and we appreciate everything that they've done. We just want to make sure that we get drunk drivers and impaired drivers off the roadways and save people from the unfortunate um, crash that happened with Eric. He was 17 years old. He was two weeks out of high school. Um, my husband has never recovered. Um, he can't come here. He can't look at pictures. He got rid of a lot of things that reminded him of Eric because he just couldn't deal with it. That was his right hand man. He does have a tattoo on his right hand with a cross with Eric's initials and his birth date and um, his day of death. So again, I just want to say thank you and thank you to the chief. I appreciate you inviting me here. My youngest boy, I always promised him that um, I would read a poem that he picked out for Eric's um, flyers. We used to hand out flyers at the corner, but now it's a little bit da more dangerous than it used to be. Um, and the cross isn't there anymore, so um, we've taken not to doing that, but we do other things by raising money uh, in his uh, behalf. I started working for AIM, which is the Alliance Against Intoxicated Motorists, as a volunteer um, in 2001. Uh, and I've been working for them ever since, speaking at schools, speaking um, at impact panels uh, to uh, DUI offenders, speaking wherever I can speak, going wherever I can go, volunteering, doing whatever I can do, because if we can save one person from going through what we went through uh, in Eric's memory, then it's all worth it. So AIM has been really important to, to me and to my family and to my life because they've been there for us um, every single step of the way when we went to court for three years. So thank you for letting me come this evening. I do want to do this one thing, and hopefully I can get through it. We little knew that morning God was going to call your name. In life we loved you dearly, in death we do the same. It broke our hearts to lose you. You did not go alone, for part of us went with you. The day God called you home. You left us beautiful memories. Your love is still our guide, and though we cannot see you, you're always by our side. Our family chain is broke and nothing seems the same, but as God calls us one by one, the chain will link again. Thank you. So if I could have uh, Robin Lyons, Jenna Gruneman, uh, Dan Drost, and Kevin Perez come on up front. Yeah, I, I've been informed Officer Perez is on a traffic crash right now, so uh, uh, he'll, we'll, we'll make sure he gets the support after the meeting. So to the three of you, I just want to thank you for making DUI enforcement, you know, a, a priority in your shift throughout the day. And you do make a difference. As we know, we don't know how many lives you impact, but uh, we know you, you have saved lives and impacted it. So thank you um, on behalf of the department and, and on behalf of AIM. So uh, first one will be for Officer Robin Lyons. Jenna Grundeman. And Officer Dan Drost. Nice job, thank you. Appreciate it.
grandchildren. Yeah. 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 If I could have our uh, planning and research analyst, Chrissy Savansky, come up front, please. So uh, as city council knows, uh, we've been an accredited agency for over 20 years. Uh, we take that very seriously. We have a lot of pride in uh, maintaining the best uh, policing standards, the national standard for policing. Um, part of that effort involves the person that has to manage that for us. And while it's a department-wide effort and the whole department is involved, uh, Chrissy Sabansky, uh, she's our she's the one that's been tasked to lead us through the past few accreditation cycles. So. Uh, Accreditation, though, they have a, a national certification for accreditation managers, and it's not an easy thing to achieve. Um, the number of requirements, uh, she has to go through some specialized training classes, uh, lead multiple successful accreditation cycles as an agency. Uh, she has to get recommendations from her fellow accreditation managers throughout the state that she works with, um, a, a letter from me, and then uh, her credentials and, and our review goes before the National Commission at one of their national um, conferences. And so in July, I'm pleased to announce that uh, Chrissy was named a certified accreditation by manager by the Commission on Accreditation for Law Enforcement Agencies. So it's a, it's a standard that's not held by many in the country. So Chrissy, nice job. <laughs> So Chrissy Kalia sent us a, uh, a certificate recognizing this for, example, for exhibiting an exemplary standard of character and commitment to the profession, demonstrating the high level of competence in the field of public safety accreditation and successfully fulfilling required criteria for the Kalia Accreditation Manager Certification Program. Congratulations. <laughs> Um, if I could have Officer Justin Bice come up. Um, so Justin's here tonight to receive the Department Life Saving Award. Uh, real quickly before I go into his specific award, uh, you know, there's uh, dozens of cases a year that uh, de members of the department are written up by their supervisors for certain cases and, you know, there's uh, department letters of commendation that come from my office. Uh, but uh, as you'll hear with a couple other cases tonight, uh, some of those cases rise to the level that they uh, go before the Department Awards Committee. And uh, that's an employee-led group that they review the criteria that we have established, they review the case, ask any questions, and then they decide who gets uh, you know, the, some of these awards that are given out. So uh, this process that I'll, I'll kind of give you a short narrative of what happened, uh, this went through the Department Awards Committee and uh, Justin's obviously very deserving of this award. So. Um, during the morning of April 11th uh, this year at about 3 o'clock, uh, while Officer Walensky was conducting a DUI investigation and the arrest of a female driver, uh, he was, Officer Byers was one of the backup officers at, on the stop. Uh, in summary, uh, at the time of the driver's arrest, the male passenger who was uh, kind of uncooperative, he opened up the door to the passenger side vehicle. Um, he tried several times to pull him up and, uh, up and out of the vehicle. Um, then he ended up collapsing forward onto the pavement. Uh, he was unresponsive, and uh, Officer Byers jumped right into action to determine what was wrong with him. Uh, so as one of the, officer, the other officers on the scene called for the paramedics to come en route, uh, Officer Byers began giving aid to the subject. Uh, he rolled the passenger to a, to a side recovery position uh, and tried to give him a sternal rub to see if there was any reaction whatsoever. Um, and after Officer Byers determined that the subject was not breathing, he used his training and he began chest compressions on him. Uh, after a short period of time, the subject did regain a slight bit of consciousness, but then later fell back into unconsciousness and stopped breathing. Um, so all this happened while the paramedics were still en route. 
Um, he maintained a very calm composure, uh, stayed in control of the scene, and uh, got uh, the subject was eventually uh, transported to the hospital where, where he did end up living from the incident. Um, one other portion of this that uh, even after performing everything he did, uh, there was a small child in the car and he made sure, you know, uh, to, to take care of that four month old and, uh, you know, get the baby to a warm car until they could get, a, get a proper uh, care for the kid and uh, make sure that there was nothing with the kid at also. So, um, Justin, your, uh, your quick, your, your, your actions uh, saved the life of someone that was having a life-threatening event and uh, can't say enough for uh, how, you, how you performed in a very stressful situation. So with that, um, in appreciation of your heroic efforts in saving the life of the individual, we present to you the Department Life Saving Award. Congratulations. <laughs> I'm going to have uh, Deputy Chief Freeze present the next awards. Come on up. Good evening. I'm just glad to be here that I don't have to answer questions about the list of bills. So, uh, I'm here tonight to present uh, Detective McCollum. Detective Banaszinski and Detective Zlotnicki with a commendation award from the department. If you guys want to come up. So as most of you know, uh, part of my responsibilities is to directly supervise the investigations division, among other things. Uh, currently, for the last two years, we've only had three detectives. We're usually slated for four. Um, People, some people don't know what a detective does on a daily basis, so I thought I'd just go through some of the things that they do daily or weekly. Uh, every morning when I come in and I review all the uh, case reports written over the night, crimes that occur, I'll uh, tabulate those on a piece of paper and walk into the office and give them assignments. And what happens usually is they all look at me, they sigh, and they go, we're already on it, boss. <laughs> so um, that's one thing they do. Uh, being a detective takes a, a very high skill set in their profession, and uh, these three are beyond uh, any expectation that I've ever had of detectives anywhere in the county. Um, they do an excellent job. Uh, their cases take them from Rockford this morning <laughs> to Indiana last month, uh, south, east, north, and west sides of Chicago. Uh, they follow up on any investigations that crimes that occur in Wooddale and they take them as far as they need to go. Uh, this case that we're going to talk about tonight will illustrate uh, how their work played in the arrest of a very dangerous and violent offender uh, back in January of uh, this year. Uh, their dedication, uh, I, I can't keep up with them. Uh, they are, all three of them are a 24-7 operation. Um, we're on a group chat together and it's 7 o'clock on a Sunday morning. We're talking about a case. It's 10 o'clock at night on a Friday night. We're talking about a case. Uh, this case in particular, I think we had them working seven days a week, whether they were on duty or off duty, just to get the job done. So I just want to give you a sense of you know, their hard work and, and dedication towards the city of Wooddale. I think it's very important. So now I'll go into reading. <laughs> uh, January 7th, uh, 2021, at approximately 1251, the Wooddale Police Department Patrol Division responded to an armed robbery which occurred at our 7-Eleven store at 311 East Irving Park Road. The initial investigation revealed that a male subject entered the store displaying a handgun, demanding money from the register. The offender proceeded to tie the clerk up on the floor prior to escaping on foot from the scene. Upon the arrival of the patrol officers, the offender was nowhere to be found. Wooddale detectives McCollum, Banaszinski, and Zlotnicki conducted the primary investigation into the armed robbery. Detectives gathered and reviewed video evidence from not only the store, but neighboring homes. Keep in mind that evidence that's recovered, if we do at a scene, takes months to be processed. It's not something that happens like on TV where it's done in an hour or 45 minutes. So they had nothing really to work with at all. 
Uh, we had no suspect information, no vehicle information, and possibly some physical evidence at the scene. Within several days of this armed robbery, the three detectives developed a potential suspect in the case who happened to reside in nearby Bensonville. It was also determined that the suspect used a disguise during his armed robbery. Over the course of the next two weeks, detectives worked tirelessly obtaining evidence needed to successfully identify and arrest the suspect in this case. A total of 13 search warrants were drafted and executed. Surveillance, intelligence gathering was, were conducted on various days and various times of the night on the suspect, and they kept constant communication with the DuPage County State's Attorney's Office. Um, just to give you an example of what a search warrant involves for a criminal case like this, um, you could work anywhere from four to eight hours just typing it up to have them change things, and it could be up to a two-day process just to get one done. So they're, they were very busy during this time. On January 29th, the suspect committed another armed robbery in the village of Addison, same manner as our incident while armed with a handgun. On February 1st, 2021, the suspect committed a third robbery in uh, the, city, the village of Schiller Park. Again, the same manner, and the clerk was tied up in that incident also. The detectives quickly realized that we needed to step up our game to get this guy off the street as soon as we could. Within a week of the latest armed robbery, detectives gathered enough evidence in the case to obtain a search warrant authorized by a DuPage County judge to search the resident of the suspect in this case. Due to the dangerous nature of these crimes, the detectives coordinated with the affected agencies involved as well as the DuPage County Merritt Metro SWAT team to execute a search warrant safely and effectively. This was a huge undertaking to organize the plan with over 50 police personnel involved. On February 9th in the early morning hours, search warrants issued were safely and then successfully executed at the suspect's home in, in Bensonville. The suspect was taken into custody and crucial evidence in all of the armed robbery cases, which include Wooddale, Lombard, Addison, and Schiller Park were recovered. Due to the hard work and dedication and tenacity of Detectives McCollum, Banaszynski, and Zlotnicki, the suspect was charged in the three armed robberies in DuPage County, as well as the one in Schiller Park. An indictment later filed by the DuPage County State's Attorney's Office uh, was filed with 54 felony counts against this suspect. This include being an armed habitual offender, unlawful restraint among the armed robbery charges. Because of their unrelenting work, a serious threat to the safety of many communities in and around DuPage County was taken off the street. Detectives McCollum, Banaszynski, and Zlotnicki have been recognized by their peers for their hard work, adherence to current laws and procedures, and their overall skills as investigators. Thank you very much for what you did. Officer Perez, could I have you come up here? Yeah. See, Kevin, by handling a crash, now you get your private award ceremony. So, <laughs> um, Kevin, I know you weren't here for the, the talk about the DUI awards, but thank you for everything you do to keep the streets safe for the city of Wooddale, and uh, it means a lot to the department and, and the residents. So, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. 
you are truly proud. Thank you very much. Hey, good to see you. Yeah. Keep up the good work. Officer Matt Nelson, can you come up? <laughs> Last and certainly not least is our, our award for the, uh, the officer of the year that from uh, 2020. As you know, with, uh, with everything that's been going on with uh, COVID, we weren't able to host a dinner with the VFW at their location. So we thought tonight would be a great time to uh, recognize Officer Nelson for everything he does for the department. Um, as a reminder, this is uh, an award that is nominated on by his peers and his fellow supervisors. And then uh, people that are nominated, we uh, discuss you know, the reasons for that at a staff meeting and then uh, choose uh, who the officer of the year is. So uh, Matt, um, some of the reasons for your nomination, uh, number one is just your attitude, your uh, willingness to always help others when asked to do. And that, that's, that's not just internally, that's in the schools, in the community and everything else. When you deserve something that you see needs attention, you take care of it and you jump in and do it. Um, he is such an asset to our department over at Fenton High School. Um, you know, that, that's a unique role, especially nowadays. And the, the students and the administration and the, uh, the superintendent over there have such respect for how Matt handles himself. And uh, he just, man, he represents policing well and the Wooddale Police Department well when he's over there. Um, you know, locally, Matt's been constantly involved in uh, Special Olympics, Cop on Top, uh, Shop with a Cop, member of the Peer Jury, uh, Kids Can't Buy Him Here, Tobacco Prevention, National Night Out, and pretty much any other event that we have, uh, Matt's always there involved and uh, just leading the way for our police department. So Matt, um, on behalf of the department and the uh, VFW, we apologize we couldn't have the dinner for you, but uh, we're here to celebrate you tonight, so congratulations. Thank you. All right, uh, Council, thank you for uh, being here. And uh, for those that came as guests of the award ceremony, don't be embarrassed to, or ashamed to, to exit the room. You, I don't know if you want to sit through the hall meeting, so. Whoa, whoa, that wasn't the deal. <laughs> and thank, thank you, Chief, and the staff, all the officers for your service. Thank you. All right, next up, I need to make one committee appointment for the Police Pension Board appointment of Dante L. DeJulius for a one-year term commencing on October 7th and expiring on April 30th, 2022. This is for the unexpired term of George Ellison, who has to step down. Do I have a motion? I'll make the motion. Second. Okay, we have a motion. A second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That passes. Welcome aboard. And just in case you guys are wondering, uh, Mr. DeJulius had a seat at the Board of Exchange for 42 years, so he's, he should be qualified to handle that position. Next. 
City Manager's report, Mr. Mermis. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I have one item this evening, but I am going to defer to our fabulous uh, Public Works Director, Alan Lang, to talk about that item. Mr. Lang. Thank you. Tough to follow all these acts of heroism uh, with talking about Reclamite. You can see how excited everybody is. Um, but Reclamite, for our newer council members and anybody else who may be interested, is a petroleum based asphalt rejuvenator, which gets applied to our roads as a liquid and actually soaks down into the binder layer of the asphalt to restore some of its waterproofing and uh, adhesive qualities to help prolong the life of the road. We typically apply it within the first five years uh, after a street gets resurfaced and it helps push off uh, further more costly delays such as crack sealing and sectional patching. This allows us to stick to a 20 year or greater uh, pavement uh, resurfacing cycle as opposed to a 15 year which would obviously require uh, increasing our budget each year for, for resurfacing. Um, so the, the liquid gets applied and a layer of sand gets applied over it to help soak up any additional liquid and also make the surface safe to drive on um, until the compound can cure. Sand gets swept up a few days afterwards. It's, it's safe for pets. It doesn't damage your vehicle. So we just wanted to um, provide some information on the product because people may be uh, misunderstanding it a little bit. For a minimal cost, we can uh, really uh, push out further more costly uh, preventative maintenance projects. Uh, for more information, you can visit our vendor's website at correctiveasphalt.com. They have a ton of brochures and educational videos on the, the product. And you were incorrect. That was very exciting. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. Appreciate it. Alderman yeah. Messina, oh, you had a comment on this? I did. It is, it's, not, it's exciting, but not exciting when you get a call. I, just, I think one thing to mention to folks at home is it takes a little bit of time for it to fade. We get these calls all the time, so be patient. I have had a wife lose a pair of gym shoes uh, after stepping on it, so yes, just be careful, and it will fade over time. But the, as you so eloquently mentioned to me when I called you with the concern, the benefits clearly way outweigh the slight inconvenience um, based on the cost savings. So thank you for that. As with any oil, it's a little messy when it goes down, but the discoloration will fade in the coming months. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, Mr. Mermis. Yeah. I, I had Alan speak about this tonight because, as Alderman Messina had mentioned, year after year since we've been using the product, we do. I get emails. I'll get calls. The electeds will get calls and emails. And um, it is important to remember that this is actually saving our infrastructure, making our infrastructure better. And the more traversed said road is, and the more rain there is, I believe, the quicker the substance dissipates. Is that correct? Absolutely, okay. yeah. All right, thank you. Next, consent agenda. If no objections, we have two items on the consent agenda. Do I have a motion? Make a motion. Okay, we have a motion and a second. There was no objections, correct? Roll call. Alderman Woods? Yes. Alderman Sosnarski? Yes. Alderman Sorrentino? Yes. Alderman Messina? Yes. Alderman Jacob? Abstain. Alderman Curielli? Yes. Alderman Carolina? Yes. Alderman Ames? Yes. Okay, we had one abstention that passes. Next. Motion to approve the two items. Item number one, a resolution authorizing the City of Wooddale participation in the 2022-2024 <coughs> program year community development block grant program. Item number two, a resolution authorizing the City of Wooddale participation in the 2021 Safe Routes to School program. Do I have a motion? I make that motion. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Roll call. Alderman Woods? Yes. Alderman Sosnarski? Yes. Alderman Sorrentino? Yes. Alderman Messino? Alderman Messina? Oh, sure. Uh, yes. <laughs> Alderman Jacob? Staying. Alderman Curielli? Yes. Alderman Catalano? Yes. Alderman Ames? Yes. And that passes. Next, committee chair reports, planning, zoning, and building. Alderman Woods? Uh, no report, Mayor. Thank you. Public Health and Safety <coughs> and Judiciary and Ethics, Alderman Sosmarski. No report, Mayor. Thank you. What is that noise? Public Works, Alderman Messina. 
three reports, Mayor. The first, uh, approval of pay request number two. Oh, hold on one second. Is it that mic? I think it's that mic. No, it's if we can wait here over here. Yeah, that mic. Yep, that's it. Someone's hearing you. Okay. Is this a little better? It's Sonny's good. hearing aid. It's all better. hearing aids. <laughs> So an approval of pay request number two, which is the final payment to Trigi Construction for the fiscal year 2021, I assume, sidewalk replacement program in the amount of $10,464.50. That would be my motion. Second. Okay, motion is second. Any comments, questions? Roll call. Alderman Woods? Yes. <clears throat> Alderman Sosnarski? Yes. Alderman Sorrentino? Yes. Alderman Messina? Yes. Alderman Jacob? Yes. Alderman uh, Curielli? Yes. Alderman Carolano? Yes. Alderman Ames? Yes. Then that passes. Next is an approval of final payment to BP&T construction for the Salt Creek Greenway Trail Bridge Rehabilitation Project in an amount of $21,544.40. Is that your motion? No. Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion. Second. Can we have a motion and a second? Or not? Questions? Roll call. Alderman Woods? Yes. Alderman Sosnarski? Yes. Alderman Sorrentino? Yes. Alderman Messina? Yes. Alderman Jacob? Yes. Alderman Catalano? Yes. Alderman Curielli? Yes. Alderman Names? Yes. And that passes. And finally, a resolution authorizing the approval and execution of an agreement for purchase and sale of a portion of the real estate located at 755 through 777 North Edgewood Avenue, Wooddale, Illinois, DuPage County, for road improvement purposes. That would be my motion. So moved. Okay, motion and a second. <coughs> Questions on this? Roll call. Alderman Woods? Yes. Alderman Sosnarski? Yes. Alderman Sorrentino? Yes. Alderman Messina? Yes. Alderman Jacob? Yes. Alderman Catalano? Yes. Alderman Curielli? Yes. Alderman Ames? Yes. And that passes. That concludes my report, Mayor. Thank you. Finance and Administration, Alderman Catalano? I have one, Mayor. Go ahead. An ordinance authorizing the issuance of a general obligation bond, alternate revenue source, series 2021, in the aggregate principal amount, not to exceed $16 million for the purpose of financing the cost of certain capital projects within the city and paying for costs related thereto, and providing for the levy of the direct annual tax sufficiency to pay the principal and the interest on said bonds. That is my motion. Second. second. We have a motion, we have a second, and Mr. Wilson is very anxious to speak, so <laughs> go ahead, Mr. Wilson. Yeah, it's trying to make sure I don't uh, feedback everybody out of here. Um, so this item, I don't know, more or less exciting than Reclamite. Um, <laughs> $16 million bond issue. Um, so real quick housekeeping. Um, you may remember uh, Mr. Maselli that's been coming the last few years after McKenzie, after Mr. McKenzie had been here. Uh, he was unable to make it this evening, uh, but we are pleased to have with us uh, Ms. Rafaelita McKenzie, also from Spear. Um, have her talk here in a second. Uh, but this deal, um, as you uh, all are aware, was for the uh, public works facility and certain land acquisition within the TIF fund. Uh, we had a very uh, robust response. We had six bidders on our deal this time. The last couple of deals, we only had four. Uh, this deal was big enough and solid enough. We even attracted Morgan Stanley out of New York. So uh, this was pretty, uh, pretty good result for us. Um, our target um, interest rate that we were looking at was 2.07. That was the last um, estimate we had had based on the market. Uh, we wound up at just a hair under 1.78. So even from the last, that's exciting. Uh, yeah. So even after the last uh, round, that's probably about, that was about a $475,000 reduction in interest costs just on that. So um, we. I'll let uh, Ms. McKenzie speak, but we were a little nervous about the markets in the last week or so, but I think it wound up okay. Um, and so, yeah, it uh, wound up, we were, I think everybody was really pleased with it. Um, and I'll stop talking and let uh, Ms. McKenzie speak, so. Go ahead, Ms. McKenzie. Good evening, everyone. Thank evening. you so much for Hi. having me. So, uh, as Brad mentioned, I'm here to 
introduce myself and to take Anthony Michelli's position tonight. Um, I've uh, been at Spear for 20 plus years. Mm -hmm. I stopped adding the plus after I hit the 20 years. It's been a very long time. So I've been doing this for a very long time. So as, as Brad mentioned, uh, the city had a competitive bond sale today, at which point there were six bids. But I do want to point out that there were 22 bids of the total six. So if you look in your, the packet that was sent out to you, there was one bidder that bid 11 times. And I think that speaks to the city. It speaks to what you're doing even during this pandemic. I had the opportunity to, to review the city's rating report and um, there were really good points about the city's financial management, your budgetary position, your reserves. And I think that speaks volume considering the uh, pandemic, you know, and what the city has, uh, or what everyone has gone through. And, you know, we work with a lot of municipalities and local governments, and so we see some of the struggles that others go through. And so I think, again, having those good numbers speak, you know, volume for the city, what you're doing here. And of course, you know, your double A plus rating that has been affirmed by the rating agency, by Sun and Poor's. Mm -hmm. But again, um, six bids that, you know, they bid 22 times. It's based on a open market bidding process where you can see your rank, but not the final bid. And as time go, runs out, you know, you have a 1.78%. And I believe the last bid was a 1.98. We were talking about a 20, uh, 0 0.20 differential between the first bid and the last bid, just to show you how competitive the bids were. Mm -hmm. So congratulations. I think it's a good time to go into the market, given where interest rates are today. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chancellor. Good job, Brad. And, and good job to Brad and your staff as well for... Am I hearing you going off again? Yeah. Don't forget the, our triple, triple crown winner over there. Yeah. Triple you. crown, you go, Secretary. Alder and Woods, you have some comments? Uh, I, had a, I had a question Shoot. Uh, for Mr. Wilson. He's trying to run away. Yeah. You do home uh, Exactly, that would be, <laughs> thank you, I didn't think of that. I've got a nice piece of commercial property. Anyway, so uh, my question has to do with uh, basically the last sentence or statement that and providing the levy of a direct annual tax sufficient to pay the principal and interest on said bonds. That's, I'm assuming, just a legal statement that has to be in there so that we're able to do that. That isn't our plan to actually do that. Is that correct? Mr. Wilson. Uh, yes, that is correct. <clears throat> um, you may remember um, when we do the tax levy, uh, there's the main tax levy, and then there's the abatement of the 2012 bonds, and then also now the 2020 B bonds. So this year, um, and then going forward, um, there'll be a third abatement of the 2021 bonds. So yes, that's just, that legally has to be in there, but that is not our intention. Our intention is to pay this back uh, through the pledge revenue, which is the Thorndale TIF-1 uh, funds. Yeah, that's, that's what I thought. Okay. I just wanted to make that clear. Thank you. Thank you. So we have a motion, we have a second. Let's have a roll call. Alderman Woods. Uh, yes. Alderman Cisnarski? Yes. Alderman Sorrentino? Yes. Alderman Messina? Yes. Alderman Jacob? Yes. Alderman Calano? Yes. Alderman Curielli? Yes. Alderman Ames? Yes. And that passes. That concludes your report? That concludes my report, ma'am. Thank you. Under airport, uh, under other business, airport noise, Alderman Jacob? Uh, no report, ma'am. Thank you, and no report for Stormwater hey, Commission. Mayor, sorry. Regarding the Go ahead. report noise, uh, it would be possible for uh, those that went to the soundproofing meeting this past, uh, was it the 29th, I believe. Can, can we give an update? I, I know with the increasing noise, is, is this the right forum to do that? Yeah, we could give an update. Uh, would you mind, mind Mike, just? Yeah, all the material, are you? Available to speak right now, or we can not really. Uh, but I went to the last meeting. The meetings for the, the 
the noise report are just what the progress is on the different phases of the, um, the process. So what houses are already been identified and what's the progress in the noise abatement for those it's particular structures. So thank you. Okay. Nice. Follow up on that. Go ahead. Yeah. Th thank you. I just, as you know, I reached out to you. There's, there's a lot of good, a lot of good information at these meetings. Some not so good, but we're just starting to get hammered again. I think people got very comfortable with COVID that there were very few flights, and so right. I just want to make sure that information's out. And that and that map, that link you sent, if you could possibly share that on our website or make sure Nick gets it on our website around those that qualify for soundproofing. That seems to help. That seemed to help a lot of people. I used it actually in two different emails in the last three days. So thank okay. you. Appreciate it. All right. Thank you. All right. Next, uh, approval of list of bills, Alderman Catalano. Yes. I'd like to entertain a motion for the, make a motion for the list of bills of October 7th, 2021. Second. In the amount of 439,000. Wait. Wait. I'm sorry. 400? I'm sorry. Oh, that's a. Yeah. We're only yeah, paying part of it. No, I, I, there was a change. I'm There's sorry. There's a change, yes. right? Yes. There was a correction. Those were. Yeah, so. What's the amount? $439,439.06. Okay. So we have a motion. And a second. a second. Any questions? Alderman Jacob? I guess, could we ask what the big change was for? Mr. Wilson, you want to answer that? <clears throat> Go ahead, Mr. Wilson. Sure, so the super technical answer is typo. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, the information that was included in the packet, the list of bills that you all reviewed, was for the $439,000, just the amount that was placed on the agenda. Um, to, for full transparency, was actually from September 2nd. So we just did, just transferred over. So just that's the typo. All right, and the manager said you had a coupon or something. I, I thought maybe that. <laughs> I thought maybe that was the BMO money that we get, the reimbursement we get from them. No. Yeah, we saved money. All right, so we have a motion, a second. Any other questions? Roll call. Alderman Woods? Yes. Alderman Sismarski? Yes. Alderman Sorrentino? Yes. Alderman Messina? Yes. Alderman Jacob? Yes. Alderman Catalano? Yes. Alderman Curielli? Yes. Alderman Ames? Yes. And that passes. And that's the end of my report. Okay, next, uh, we need to adjourn into executive session for review of official minutes and personnel. Do I have a motion? Second. We have a motion and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, we are adjourned. We're, we're going to go on the back.